Thanks for joining our video demo series for the Oracle ZFS storage appliance. Now I'm going to talk to you about the some of the performance benefits of the ZFS storage appliance. One of the things about the ZFS storage appliance that really sort of sets it apart from the competition is the amount of cache that the e appliance has. This particular box that I'm working on happens to be the smallest generation box that uh, Oracle sold at 7120. It only had 48 gigabytes of memory, which when compared to the competitors, this was a huge amount. But as we ship systems today, we have exponentially expanded this to include multiple terabytes of DRAM cache and flash for read and write performance, because as we know, DRAM is 10 to 100 times faster than flash itself. Uh, that allows us to have an extremely large amount of cache hits out of memory um, and have extreme, extreme performance. Uh, we can get massively more performance from DRAM bakes cache than we can out of even flash, which we use in our devices for both read and write performance and I'll show you that. So uh, let's move ahead and show you some workloads running on this appliance. Um, I guess just to show you the appliance, like I said, it's a 7120 previous generation, only 48 gigabytes of memory. The actual storage pool itself is also extremely small. It only has 10 drives in it. Uh, they happen to be, uh, I think they are two or three terabyte drives. And um, they're mirrored in a mirror configuration. We have one lot of device and zero cache devices. So we have no reg SSD, but we have one write SSD. And we have 10 spinning disks mirrored in, uh, in a mirror configuration. So if we go start a workload on this, First, we'll start off with a couple of um, small I.O. So I have a whole bunch of threads running. These are running fiber troll byte header percent reads. And we'll start both of these workloads and go back to the appliance and immediately we'll come over here, click on uh, NFS operations per second because this is already running over VMware. And immediately what we'll see is we have a tremendous amount of IO per second. Uh, we could drug down on this and look at latency, which is probably a name better measurement of performance. And you can see all these IOs are all sub millisecond response time. So they're all hitting our cache. Uh, you know, if you were to divide this number out, um, that would be 53, 549 divided by 10. You know, we're doing something like 5,354 IOPS per drive. <laughs> well, obviously you can't do that with 10 7,200 RPM hard drives. That's all coming out of our cache. Uh, and that's why when you look at the performance numbers of the ZFS, it does extremely well, uh, customer environment, benchmarks, that sort of thing. Uh, let's take a look at some different workloads. So that's small block I.O., which typically there isn't very many applications actually that run that way. Um, but let's look at some others. What about large block? Now, there are lots of large block customers. And in this case, I'm running a couple different workloads. Uh, lots of threads. These are 32K in size. Again, I'm doing all reads. Let's see if the cache can handle this. Start the workloads, come over here. So now we start the IOPS. Latency still looks fantastic. Uh, we do see now we're only doing about 10,000 ramps, but interestingly, what we should take a look at is let's go take a look and see what we're doing for NFS bytes per second. Because usually when we measure uh, thoroughput applications, we care much more about the bytes per second. So now you can see here these two virtual machines are doing over 400 megabytes per second over these 10 hard drives, which is a decent amount. Let's see a peak. Yep.
Then um, next, let's check another workload. So we'll get rid of the height thorough put. And we will run a couple of what I would call more production type workloads. So these are running, uh, they're actually running 8K. Let me double check that. Let's change this so it's like the uh, site file is a little bit incorrect. That's okay, it's quickly changed. Remove that. There we go, 8K. Let's just double check this parameter. Yes, 8K, 5, 8K blocks, 75% reads, which is more uh, like a production environment, especially like in Oracle database. We'll add a bunch of threads, kick out that guy. And we'll come over here. Let's do the same exact thing. Let's see, these ones will fare correct. They are 8K. Start that workload. And then let's go back and see what's happened to our performance. And so now we're doing a more traditional workload. IOPS 19,000. Uh, let's see what the peak IOPS are. We still do about 34,000 IOPS, which is a huge amount. But now we're doing uh, writes as well as reads. Uh, if we go in and look at our Thoroughput numbers, let's sync all these screens up. We can see down quite a bit at Thoroughput 270 megabytes a second from this box. But all of our I.O. is still below 5 milliseconds per second. So the way that ZFS is able to do this with such a small amount of drives, uh, and you can see that we're doing a, a mixed workload, by the way. Let me um, go in here, and if we say... Show me by type of operation, it'll show that we're doing 75% reads, 80% writes. Uh, we can get extremely granular, you know, look by client, by file name, uh, by size. We can see the block size. Let's take a look at that. There you go. The majority of the blocks are you know, after the overhead, right around that 6K mark. But the way we're able to get such a high performance is has a lot to do with our write SSDs. If we go in and look at uh, disk idle operations broken down by disk, uh, you'll see our 10 drives in here. They're all fairly busy, but one of them is extremely busy. That's this guy here. He's doing 4,700 IOPS per second. That's the write SSD. So what happens is when a write comes in, it's buffered by this write SSD drive, and you can have multiples of those in our appliances. Um, uh, just to show you the effect that would have if you were not to have those, and then you're relying on either a battery back cache, uh, some sort of NVRAM, much smaller amounts than where we'll have this drive is actually a subject for the gigabyte drive. Uh, let's show what would happen if you ran in a write cache like you typically do on other customer environments. We could simulate this by going into these file systems and turning off the write cache. So I'm going to go into the VMware project and I'm going to turn off synchronous write bias. So that says use the write SSDs. I'm going to say change it to thorough put for all the shares that VMware is running on, which is my workload. If I go back to analytics, I'll see a dramatic difference. So now I went from doing, you know, 30 to 40,000 my apps, you know, latency all of a sudden, millisecond. Now all of a sudden I have many IOs uh, much, much slower in the, you know, um, 50s, 100 milliseconds. Um, the bytes per second, you know, dropped from a couple hundred down to, I'm only doing about 20 megabytes a second. And now the writes are bottlenecked. So we, they're trying to write to disk. And now what you see is what you typically would. So now the two hard drives are extremely busy, or the 10 hard drives are extremely busy trying to write all these because now everything's been having to go to disk because we've ran out of cash. And so from a write perspective, so everything's going to disk. So in, in the real ZFS environment, if we saw this issue, we would basically turn around and purchase more write SSDs, add them into the pool, 
and get the performance we needed. So let's go back and add some more right SSDs. In our case, we only have one. There it is. We'll change it to latency. Hit apply. Go back to analytics and instantly we'll see our performance come back like this good. DBAs are happy. 30,000 apps. Sub millisecond response times. Good thorough put. Uh, the uh, operations look good and then uh, the drives look good. And now our regular drives are not having to do much work. The right SSD is doing much of the work. So the other place where we do perform much, which I don't have the ability to demo here, is as data ages out of our cache, typically uh, in most systems we sell, we also sell them with some 1.6 gigabyte read SSD devices that are acting as cache. So as data ages out of our cache, instead of, which is a large amount, instead of just kicking it out and say, go get it from disk, we then can send that data down to these read SSDs that sit right in the controllers uh, it can give you many additional flash-based IOPS. So that's the uh, hybrid storage pool and a high level overview of how ZFS provides uh, incredible performance uh, at incredible crisis. Thanks so much for your time.